got my coffee. Take a sip. Here we go. Here we go. Have I said that every single video? Um, I'm starting out with the Becca Backlight Primer mixed in with Makeup Forever Step 1 Hydrating Primer. Um, I love these two together. The Hydrating Primer really does prep the skin and that Backlight Primer it just gives the most epic, beautiful glow that shines through most foundations. Now I'm going in with a teeny tiny brush and spot concealing uh, with Dermacol 208. Um, this was a science experiment. It didn't turn out too well. It looked fine texture wise on the skin, um, but it didn't really give the coverage that like straight up going in with Dermacol would give. It kind of going over it with the sponge and another foundation kind of negated the Dermacol. Um, but the foundation I'm using is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Liquid Foundation and I am in the shade Y215 and I'm using Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Um, after I go in and cover my whole face with a light layer of this, I try to go back in and build up that Dermacol again because I don't like a really full, full coverage but uh, I have a lot of face demons out to party today, and so I wanted to try to cover them up without it looking like I was wearing a crap ton of foundation. So here I am going back in and spot concealing again with a tiny brush and um, Dermacol 208, and then I blend it out with my fingers. Now I'm using the NYX HD concealer in the color Fair and blending it out with a makeup sponge and get a little too aggressive, knock my contact sideways. Um, today I was trying something new. I got the Kat Von D Lock It Brightening Powder in Petal and I'm using a Real Technique setting brush with it. And it looked fine. It was a little smoothing. Um, it didn't look drying on my eyes, which is what I tend to have an issue with. Um, and it looks fine on camera, but in person, I feel like it was too pink for me. It was almost like too peachy. But like, look, it actually does kind of blur and brighten things up. Not a whole ton, but... Um, I have to play around with it a little bit. Maybe I need to use a lighter shade of concealer if I'm going to set with that powder. Um, Petal is the shade for fair people, but I think it just had a little too much color to it. Um, I am going in with the Milani Eyeshadow Primer and the Persona Cosmetics Identity Palette. I picked this up at the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty for half off. Um, and I will say, I was a little disappointed when I got it because all of the photographs, oh hey Liz, all of the photographs online, it looks bright and warm and beautiful and it is, it is very pretty but it's a lot cooler and ashier than the pictures online show it. Like the browns online look warmer and oranger and in person they're definitely just a medium cool toned brown. So I'm going in with the Sigma E40 and I set the whole eye with Humble and for the crease I'm going in with a combination of Humble and Charming because there wasn't really a mid-tone, a, a light enough transition color. Um, so I created my own. So now I'm just going in with Humble on a Smith 230, I think. Um, I will say on this, I had a, some skipping on that inner third, if you can see it on my crease. And I didn't have the issue on the other eye. Um, so I'm not sure if maybe I didn't set my primer well enough. Um, but it, it took a lot of work to blend that skipping out. So I think it was 
the primer was a little too sticky and so the pigment just kind of stuck down and didn't want to budge. Um, here I am with that E40 trying to blend that out and I don't succeed, but we get it in the end. I know you are worried. Now I'm going on to the Luxie 231 and taking the color Chick and putting it on my outer third-ish and kind of into the crease. And uh, really enhancing that skippage and those folds in my eyelid. This is a clean Smith 232 and really trying to work on that area to try to get it blended out. Um, the other eye went swimmingly, but I didn't do it on camera, so I don't have that to prove it. But this eye, man, that place where it skipped, it just did not want to blend. It took a lot of work to get that smoothed over. taking the color seductive on my finger and putting it kind of on the inner third or the middle third and then on the inner third I am taking the color sassy and then I'm going back into the crease with a combination of audacious and charming so I can get that little warm orange back in um, and then I'm just beefing up that outer quarter of my eye with some more chick. And I did eventually get that skipping in my eye, or the skipping in my crease blended out, finally. Uh, and here I am, I'm taking a combination of Audacious and Humble now, just because I really liked the warm crease, I liked the purple going to an orange, I felt like I had lost a little bit of that warm orange, so I'll have to go back in and put some more in. And I'm taking a combination of Audacious and Humble, and I'm just going to run it on my lower lash line. Um, this is an L detailed crease brush. It is so scratchy and painful, but it's the only brush I have that really does a good job when I want to just have a blown out color underneath the crease. Um, so I use it. Anyway, I torture myself. I'm taking a real technique stipple brush and um, bare mineral all over base color in the pan and using that as a bronzer. And then I'm going to take a real blush brush and put on Charlotte Tilbury cheap sheet in the ice And um, I wasn't going for a chiseled face or anything, so I just kind of Charlotte Chilbury uh, Hollywood light wand, and holy shit, is this the most beautiful highlight I've ever seen. I think I might even like it better than the RMS Luminizer. It's beautiful. It blends out well. It catches the light. Like it looks like a healthy glow, but more, but not like a highlight. I can't describe it, but. I'm in love. It's amazing. It's no regrets. It's so beautiful. Um, next, I'm taking my NYX Tinted Brow Mascara and just going in my brows. Um, because I have pretty substantial brows, I don't really need to use pencil or anything like that. I kind of start about halfway through and comb through my brows and then take this left over and use it on the inner third of them. Sometimes I have a little gaps in my brows and I'll just take the tip of the wand and fill those in and that works out pretty well for me. I'm going to curl my lashes and use uh, Butter Lemons Double Decker Lashes Mascara, which I do not like. Um, and then I went in with the lower lashes in a three-year-old lash. Um, and I'm just highlighting here. No one talks about the fact that Floor Lashes has a 3 year old option, and I have no idea why. Because 
because these lashes are literally the perfect lashes for me. I like better than any lash I've ever had because I got to make exactly what I wanted. And it was only like four dollars more than their stock lashes. So I'm not sure why no one never talks about this, but you should check it out. It's amazing. The only downside is though, you they're all pink. So you can't choose to get synthetic, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I filled in my little mold with the It Cosmetics uh, Brow Powder Universal Taupe. And then I used a lip liner, a uh, Rimmel Exaggerate, and East End Snob. And then that lip gloss was a uh, Clay de Poe Radiant Lip Gloss in Warm Crystal. And that is it for this look. My name is Liz. I am Beauty and Bounty everywhere on Snapchat, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Look at that highlight. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.